So you're ready to grade your cards? Does it really have to be that difficult? Well, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. Hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Thanks for being here on the channel. You mean a lot to me being here on the channel. So, uh, so glad you're here. Let's chat today a little bit about grading, uh, grading your magic cards, grading your Pokemon cards, the grading industry as a whole, off the backs of Rudy from Alpha Investments, announcing that he has purchased PCG, Premier Card Grading, uh, a grading company out of New Zealand. Um, we we are going to chat about card grading because I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a hot topic here uh, with something big like that happening in the industry. So, uh, in my opinion, there are only two reasons in which you should grade your cards. Uh, and if you don't fall into one of these two camps, you just shouldn't grade your cards. The reason number one is that you want to increase the value of your cards, okay? Reason number two is that you want to hold your cards and display them or show them off and you want to keep them preserved. Those are the only two reasons in which I would tell you that yes, you should go grade your cards. If you don't fall into those camps, you just don't need to get your cards graded. Put your cards in a binder, use them in a deck, do whatever you want. The first reason to increase the value of your card is where a lot of contention pops up in the grading card industry. Uh, you have so many options and in the pandemic all these options just blew up there was all these new grading companies like pcg right popping up all over the place um, and what we've learned since then in the last two years in my opinion and through looking at the market of all these cards is that they just don't hold any premium the only premiums to any amount of money for card grading seems to be in psa and BGS. Um, and as a store, we do a lot of card grading. We, uh, particularly with Pokemon, if we get a really nice condition card, whether that be like an alt art, um, some sort of, you know, vintage hollow, especially Charizards, anytime we get one in that looks really good, potential eight, nine, 10, we send that in for grading. I don't, I don't care about getting the money back quick. I don't care if it takes me, you know, six weeks, 10 weeks, a month, five months, whatever it is. Um, that investment in grading oftentimes will two, three, even four X. I remember a Yu-Gi-Oh collection. I don't usually buy Yu-Gi-Oh, but a Yu-Gi-Oh collection came in. I spent like two, two grand on the collection and there were three cards in there that raw near mint condition were worth $350. I graded them and three of them came back. I think three, two of them came back as tens. I ended up selling the tens for basically what I paid for the whole collection uh, because you can increase the value of the cards that much in the high-end cards. Anyway, so the value going up in these cards is why a lot of people will grade them. And that poses some problems for these newer grading companies, uh, CGC, PCW, um, you've got SGC, you've got all the other smaller companies. That poses a lot of problems for these companies because the market is simply not accepting an increase in value on cards that are graded that way. Now, I wanna go into a little bit of why I think that is, and then I wanna come back on the side of like other reasons you can grade your cards are not financial. But I think one of the biggest reasons uh, why they don't hold a premium is because people are already in the ecosystem with PSA and BGS. I've kind of found uh, through my various trading card things uh, that most Pokemon fans are going to be preferably towards PSA uh, and most Magic fans prefer BGS, especially Vintage Magic. BGS seems to be the, the go-to. And then, you know, kind of the games that fall in line with those things pick those sides. So like sorcery, most, a lot of the sorcery community is built around the Magic the Gathering community. And so they prefer the, you know, the BGS slaps. Um, now, one of the caveats with that, with Pokemon, uh, is the subgrades and the, the point scale. So PSA has a point scale one through 10 in full numbers and BGS has the point fives. I think actually PSA does have a 8.5 that they rarely give out. Um, but you will see a premium in something like a 8.5. Oh, 
get that, I can't get it to focus. Something like an 8.5 in BGS and the higher end Pokemon. So like the Shining Mewtwo, right? Uh, I actually w purchased this and I paid more than I would have for a B th than I would have for a PSA 8. And the person who sold it may have had a PSA 8 and upgraded it to a BGS 8.5 in order to get another four or five, 600 bucks out of it at the time. The same works in a 9.5, a 9.5 high end for BGS would be worth more than low end, er, than a high end, you know, PSA 9. There is a, a, Pokemon does go into these different things, but for the most part, you're sticking with your ecosystem. And this is why I think it's really difficult for new grading companies to come in and break the mold and, and explore uh, taking any market share from Pokemon and really from Magic because the ecosystem is really already created. And that gets you into these like newer TCGs. And, and the question is, do people, are people coming into these newer TCGs from outside communities or do they already have an attachment to the PSA, the BGS? Like for me, I, I display PSA. So I don't really want to even put up BGS slabs on my wall, my Pokemon shelf, because all the other slabs are PSA and they look good together. Um, so that's kind of this weird ecosystem thing where the grades of cards and who you're grading with really does matter. It's not even, I, it's it's honestly less about the quality of the grade. Like I think CGC does a pretty good job in their, you know, their grading. But if you look at CGC, uh, like a CGC 9 sells for about the price of a PSA 8 uh, in Pokemon world. So it, it's just hard for these companies to break into the mold. Now it was easier three or four years ago or two or three years ago in the pandemic when PSA and BGS were backlogged, you know, a year and everybody was looking for other companies. And that was a great opportunity for uh, companies really like CGC really grew a lot. SGC grew a ton in the um, sports card market. But at the end of the day, now that PSA is fully open, now that BGS is fully open, um, I don't see the value in going to any other company to get your grade if you care, again, about the financial side of things because the market has not accepted any of these other companies in the way that the market accepts PSA and BGS. So if you care about that first side, about your cards increasing in value, or if you're a store who's looking to, you know, ex exponentially grow your collection as a store, right? So a collection comes in, a purchase comes in, and you look for the high-end cards, you look for the good condition cards, and you grow the value of that collection by putting in the extra work of getting the cards graded. I think you've gotta be looking at PSA and BGS, again, in my opinion. Now, there is that second reason to grade your cards, and this is where it's gonna be really interesting uh, to see how these, game, these grading companies work with, you know, for instance, Rudy, purchasing a game, a grading company, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how that ecosystem works out. Because if you don't care about the financial value, what you might care about is the connection to a specific person or brand or, or you know, game or whatever. If it's so sorcery is doing these special card, these special displays for their PCG grades. And like, there may be people who care about that from a visual standpoint for their own collection. And I think at that point, especially if it's cheaper to grade than PSA or, or BGS, at that point, I think there is a reason that you would go with with one of these other companies. Uh, for instance, I really, really like SGC. I don't actually have a slab anymore of SGC, but I love the black border. I just thought it looked really, really cool. And I always thought I would maybe grade my personal Pokemon collection a little bit higher into the SGCs. And then I just decided it wasn't worth it for me. But I remember being like, I really would like to do that because it looks cool. I like the way that it looks. Um, so I think there are a couple of different opportunities there, depending on what you want. Just be careful, be careful, um, because when you list a CGC 9 or a P PCG 9 in one of these games, it's not gonna hold the premium that a PSA or a BGS does for the specific game. It just won't, because the years of experience and the years of market history, you just can't get that in a new grading company. You can't get 25 years of market history of data, of sold listings, of, of you know community understanding that you get 
now. It just, it just doesn't happen. So just be careful, figure out why you're grading your cards. Whenever somebody bring car brings cards to me to say, hey, will you help me get these graded? I always ask that question, why are you grading them? Do you care about the value? Or do you just want to pick a slab, a case that you like the best? Um, and I think that's at the end of the day, the big question that you have. So let me know your thoughts about grading in the comment section below. Give them all to me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. I would love to hear them. I hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Thanks for clicking on the videos, for hitting subscribe. Uh, thank you to all the patrons who support the channel uh, and to everybody who shops over at gamegrove.gg. Have yourselves a great day. Be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video. Thank you.